Hi, you're watching the Biological Management webcast. Uh, this was created by Brittany Dieter and Cheryl McIntyre of the BC Centre for Disease Control. I'd like to welcome you. You will see that there are five separate sections of this presentation. This is the first, the introduction. It should be about eight or nine minutes. And the following presentation will be divided into segments of between 25 and 40 minutes. These are meant to be watched um, sequentially, but they don't have to be watched all at the same time. So if that's not convenient for you, feel free to go away and come back. All right, let's get started. So here's a presentation outline for the very first um, section. We're going to start with just a little overview of what is the cold chain talk about the roles of the Biological Products Monitor and the Biological Products Consultant. And then we're going to hit the four areas of vaccine wastage. Those are cold chain breaks in transit, so that's from BCCDC Pharmacy to the health authorities, cold chain breaks in the field, vaccine expiring, and ordering surplus vaccine. So why is the cold chain important? What is the cold chain? Obviously, as health professionals, we need to ensure that we're providing an effective product to our clients. Vaccines are damaged by exposure to excessive cold, heat, or light. They also have an expiry date. Um, exposure of a vaccine to cold, heat, or light, or having the vaccine pass its, its expiry date, all obviously cause a loss of vaccine potency, and they do damage the vaccine. So, Loss of vaccine potency and damaged vaccines are problems because they cause a risk of adverse events. There's a failure to protect either the individual or the population, which leads to increased risk of disease. There could be a loss of public confidence in vaccine programs. For example, if people had been well vaccinated against um, tetanus or had had all of their tetanus shots, but still developed tetanus because the vaccine was ineffective because of a cold chain break, that could obviously be se severely problematic to people's understanding of how well that vaccine works. And finally, the supply of vaccines can be somewhat irregular at times. There can be manufacturing shortages that we can't necessarily uh, count on having any advance notice of. So if that's the case, uh, we need to make sure that we're making the very best possible use of our vaccines because the supply is not 100% consistent. Why all this cold chain information now? If you look at the picture on the left, you can see that there are 4,100 doses of traditional vaccines. So in this case, it's polio and MMR vaccines. And the total value of that entire fridge, all of those doses, is $635.50. Great value for lots of doses. If you look on the right-hand side, you can see that there are 625 doses of a new vaccine, and it's the rotavirus vaccine that's um, available here. And I'd like to like like to thank the World Health Organization for these pictures. Um, those 625 doses are worth almost $5,000. So if we were to have a loss of um, power or if we were to have a freezing incident in one of these fridges, the amount of money that that single break would cost would obviously be very, very different with the new vaccines that we use. Does anyone have any idea of what it might cost to vaccinate 100 infants completely up to kindergarten? I'll give you a second to think of it. So that would be 300 doses of Infinrix Hexa, 300 doses of Prevnar, 200 doses of Nisvax C, 100 doses of Varicella, 200 doses of MMR, and 100 doses of PDSL. And the total cost for all of those vaccines is $42,768. So vaccines are a very effective health intervention but that doesn't mean that they are um, low cost by any means. So each one of those doses is, is precious. I'm going to talk a little bit about the role of the biological product consultant now. The, bi the biological pr product consultant is basically in charge of the vaccine stability chart. So what they're going to do is make decisions regarding vaccine safety and efficacy after cold chain incidents. They're going to provide staff training to tell people how to manage the cold chain at that uh, health unit level. It's important that the biological product consultant be able to confirm that criteria are met for vaccines if they're going to be returned for redistribution. And we'll talk about redistribution um, a bit later on. 
So as I said, the Biological Products Consultant is incredibly good friends with the stability chart and addendum, which we'll talk about in Section 3. The Biological Product Monitor is friendly with the fridge the way the Biological Product Consultant is friendly with the vaccine stability chart. The monitor is responsible for ordering vaccine, receiving and storing vaccine, and monitoring the inventory. They're responsible for tracking cold chain incidents and vaccine history. So if a vaccine has been exposed to any cold chain incident, even if it's deemed to be fine, we need to know where that vaccine is and sort of what's happened to it in the past so we can make decisions about future incidents. They're responsible for monitoring that fridge twice daily and for making sure that the fridge is well maintained so that it's safe with the vaccine. As Cheryl McIntyre always says, it is important to know your refrigerator. The biological products monitor and the fridge are at times the very best of friends, not a casual relationship. Vaccine wastage is something that you might hear a lot about. Our overall wastage goal for the province of BC, and indeed I think based on the World Health Organization's recommendations, is to have a goal of only 3% wastage. If you look here, you can see that between 2005-2006 and the years 2009-2010 to date, our vaccine wastage rates have actually dropped significantly. So what happened was there, there uh, was a group form that looked at vaccine wastage reduction and they meet, I believe, on a monthly basis and talk about different strategies that can help us. And as you can see, they're, they're quite successful. The four major contributors, as I said before, to vaccine wastage are cold chain breaks in transit, cold chain breaks within the health authority, vaccine expiring in the field, and ordering too much vaccine. These are four pretty natural breaking points so they will be sort of the chapter titles for the next four sections of this webcast. They are all responsible for a different amount of cold chain uh, or a vaccine wastage, pardon me. Vaccine wastage due to surplus is about 17%. Expiring vaccine accounts for about 36%. Cold chain breaks in transit are about 16%. And cold chain breaks in the field are about 31%. So all of these have different strategies that we might use to remedy them. And as you can see, all of them represent a different percentage of the total uh, value of vaccines that we're losing to wastage every year. And that is it for section one of our webcast. Um, I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in unit two.